I am gonna break down why the SAT math section is free and easy points and how anyone can score an 800 with a little practice. All right, so we need to set a baseline. And the best way to do this is to look at an old PSAT or SAT that you've taken and see what your math score is. And if you're lucky, you can even see the breakdown of the problems you missed and go over that. However, if you're starting completely from scratch, that is okay, because we're gonna take a practice test to first gauge where you are at. Now, you may be asking, why do I need to take a practice test if I haven't even studied? Well, it's important to see where your baseline is and see what you need to improve, because the worst thing you can do is practice skills and practice questions that you've already mastered. What is the point of that? And you're just wasting your time. So we're gonna take that practice test and see how we do. Okay. So you've taken a practice test and the next thing I personally would do is go over all the concepts and all the different topics and formulas that the digital SAT math section is gonna cover because the SAT really likes sticking with what they do. And what I mean by that is since it is a standardized test, they really like repeating certain questions, repeating question types, and it's a good idea to get familiar with that before you go into practicing. Because if you're just practicing questions over and over again without really understanding the concepts being tested, you're wasting your time. And the worst thing you can do is waste your time when studying for the SAT when you could spend that time bolstering your extracurriculars, having fun with friends, or literally doing anything else. So you're gonna wanna go over some of those formulas and math concepts. Now let's go over the four main topics of questions you're gonna see on your math section. Algebra, advanced math, problem solving and data analysis, and geometry and trigonometry. You may be wondering, I'm taking calculus right now, why bother? I aced Algebra 2, Geometry, I did that out of the womb, what am I doing? Well, that actually is another layer of the SAT that most students don't consider. Because it's been so long since they've taken these classes, they do poorly just because they forgot some of the formulas or forgot how to solve certain very specific questions the SAT tests. Because of this, it's even more important for you to go over the exact concepts and problem types tested on the SAT. I'm not gonna go over all those in this video, but a quick Google search or just going through Khan Academy one day should be enough for a lot of you. So you've got your baseline and you've reviewed those concepts, you may be asking what's next. Well, to really give you those juicy tips to get an 800, we have to split this down into two camps. One camp is people scoring below a 650 and the other camp is people scoring above a 650. So if you're scoring under 650, you probably have some significant gaps or holes in your knowledge, which is completely fine because a lot of the stuff covered is really niche. And especially if it's been a couple years since you've taken algebra two or geometry, you're gonna need to fill those gaps. Now, the best way to do this is gonna be taking practice tests, but not just taking practice tests just to take them. Cause that again, would just be a waste of your time and you're just grinding your head against the grindstone. No, no, no. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take those practice tests, then go onto YouTube and watch walkthroughs of people breaking down the problem systematically and see how you solve the problem and compare it to those people. An important thing to note with that is since there are only four official digital practice tests, you're gonna to wanna to save those and not use those as practice test study material. What I personally would recommend is go back and try to find some of those old paper SATs because the math concepts tested haven't changed at all except for imaginary numbers. So if you come across a problem dealing with imaginary numbers, you can skip it knowing that it won't be on your digital SAT. So now that you've grinded through some practice tests, gone on Khan Academy, done your due diligence, memorized all the formulas you need and mastered all those concepts, you should be scoring in the upper 600s and the low 700s with relative ease. Because like I said, the math section on the SAT does not change. It will be the same since it is a standardized test and they're trying to keep it as standard as possible. So once you start noticing those patterns and questions, you're gonna be acing that. Okay, so now you're scoring above 650, you're feeling good, but you really wanna break that 700 and get to that 800 barrier. Now, to get to that 800 mark, you're gonna need a mistakes journal. And a mistakes journal, all it is, is it's just a list of your mistakes. So you get a spiral notebook, that's what I did personally. And every time I'd get a math question wrong, I'd write out the question word for word, or if you're using paper tests, you could even cut it out and paste it in. I just wrote them out because a lot of the tests I was doing were online. Once you do that, write a detailed explanation of how to arrive at the correct answer, and then a one to two sentence blurb about why you personally got that question wrong. Now, this can be as simple as, I tried to do some addition in my head. I said eight plus 10 is 19 and not 18. So I just made a careless error. That's fine, but you need to mark that down because you'll start noticing trends in how you're missing questions or the types of questions you're missing. And that is key. Because if you're scoring in these low 700s, high 600s, 
oftentimes you're making a lot of careless mistakes or just even a couple and those careless mistakes are really costing you a lot of points. So cutting down on those by understanding where you're messing up and what trends and mistakes you're making is crucial to get an 800. And another great thing is you'll start noticing types of problems you're getting wrong. Say you're getting systems of equations wrong consistently. And every time you look at your mistakes journal, you're like, oh my goodness, I have five system of equations questions wrong in a row in my mistakes journal. Something needs to change. This is where you go into Khan Academy, go into YouTube, whatever you want, and start mastering those concepts because it is gonna be that difference between your 700, low 700s, and those high 700s and 800. Now, something to keep in mind is that you truly have to put your ego to the side. You can't let it cloud your judgment and be like, well, I'm just not gonna get this type of problem wrong again. Why do I need to bother writing it down? Because it's oftentimes those problems that are keeping you back from scoring those high 700s and getting to that 800. So now you have your mistakes journal. The next crucial piece of advice is you need to work on your pacing. You have to, there's no way around it. Whether you're taking a test in school, you're taking a test anywhere, you need to have your pacing down pat. So the way to do this on the SAT math section, at least the new digital modules, is you wanna get through those first 15 problems with ease because these are oftentimes gonna be the easiest problems in the whole module. From there, you'll be able to tackle problems 16 through 22 with a lot more confidence because you'll have more time saved up. You need to be able to get to this point because oftentimes, especially on that math module two, problems 16 through 22 will make or break your score. A part about pacing that most people don't think about is you actually wanna slow down sometimes and really understand what the question is asking for. And this can come in the form of making sure you're solving for X when they ask for X, or this could be just solving the problem in the way that is most optimal by taking a step back for a couple seconds and just really analyzing it. And eventually you wanna be getting to the point where you're finishing the section and you have enough time to go and double check every single answer. If this means you finish with 10 minutes to spare and that's enough time for you, perfect. But you need to figure out that sweet spot, especially when you have something as powerful as Desmos, you can go through and systematically recheck every problem to make sure you got the correct answer. And when you're rechecking the problems, don't just double check your math, Double check exactly what the question is asking for because this trips up a lot of students and leads to a lot of careless errors. This was personally very crucial for me because oftentimes I get through math sections with a couple missed questions, literally just because I was trying to speed through them or I was solving them in a wrong way. And once I started eliminating those, I started consistently scoring 800s on those practice tests. And that was completely game changing for my confidence and also for your test taking abilities in general, even outside of the SAT. So what I don't wanna see is that laziness kicking in, especially at the end of the test when you're tired and you're like, what's the worst that could happen if I just spend these five minutes not really going over my answers? You've studied too hard, you've gone through too many practice tests to kick back and relax at the very end when that could be the difference between that 760 or that 800. Now here's some bonus tips, especially for the digital SAT so you can really get that 800 guaranteed on the math section once you put in the practice. My first tip is you wanna lock in with Desmos. Desmos is going to be your best friend, regardless of what your math level is and how many problems you think you can do in your head or without it. Now, this doesn't mean using Desmos as some kind of crutch where after you've learned how to use it effectively and efficiently, you just use it for every problem. You can do that, nothing's stopping you, but some questions can be solved faster without Desmos. I'd use it personally as if you had time and wanted to double check your answers. That's completely cool. But Desmos truly can be life-saving, especially on those really difficult 16 through 22 on math module two questions. If you can use Desmos or somehow incorporate it in the way you solve the problem, that can completely change the game for you. My second big piece of advice is to take practice tests under test-like circumstances. So like I said, you only have four official practice digital SATs. So save those for the weeks leading up to your official SAT, practicing them on Saturdays under test-like circumstances. So if that means waking up early, having a breakfast that you would have on your SAT day and taking that practice test at 8 a.m. sharp, do it. I cannot stress this enough. This really helped me the most with my score and helped put me under test-like circumstances so I would get accurate feedback on how well I was studying. Because in the end of the day, those practice tests will be the best gauge to what you're actually gonna score come test day. For example, for me, the tests leading up to my official SAT, I was scoring in the high 1500s consistently, getting 800s on almost every test except one. And from there, it built up my confidence 
And on test day, I ended up getting a 1560. My third piece of advice is to look up the most difficult questions the SAT has ever given out. And this may be on YouTube, maybe on a website, whatever it is, just look them up and try to solve each one, then watch the walkthrough or read the walkthrough on how someone else solved it and how they broke them down. And this is gonna be super crucial for that math module too. Time's ticking, it's the 14th round of the fight, all your studying has led up to this moment. You don't want to be stumped by a question because you haven't got enough reps in with difficult SAT math questions. You don't ever want to get to a question and have seen nothing like it in your studying. So again, look up those difficult math questions. It doesn't matter if they're from the paper test or not, because like I said before, the test really hasn't changed for the math section other than removing those imaginary and complex numbers. I honestly believe anyone can score an 800 on their math section or really close to it because it is free, easy points even if you're using only free resources, just using Khan Academy, YouTube, and just online articles, you should be set for the SAT math section. Now, if you want a little bit more, you want some consistency in your practice, check out my app, Summit SAT. It's made for students to practice on the go from their phone. It goes through all the math concepts that's going to be tested, and it's a way to get more of those reps in to just get more familiar with how the SAT asks questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more SAT college-related content, and best of luck on your next digital SAT.